Okay, welcome to our game theory lesson on sequential games. So, as we've learned, of course, games can be simultaneous or sequential. You could represent either simultaneous games or sequential games in what we call normal form. But most of the time, what we're going to end up seeing is that games that are simultaneous go in normal form and games that are sequential go in uh, extended form or with a tree diagram. So a game is represented in extensive form when it's shown as a sequence of decisions. Naturally, if a game is sequential, right, the game tree seems to make sense because the, the payoff matrix, you have no idea of the timing of the sequence of events in a payoff matrix without more information. Whereas if you're shown a tree diagram or decision tree, you know who's moving first, second, third, fourth, everything. It's all laid out in the tree. It really, it's intuitively, it seems to fit more with uh, sequential games. But we do need to spend a little bit of time on this. This is not one of the more exciting lessons to give you a fair warning ahead of time as you know, it's just some of the rules. How do we set up the tree? How do we draw the tree? What's meant by all of this information? Um, several different things, not fun, but we got to do it. Uh, it doesn't take too long either. So what are the properties? Um, well, players make decisions, right? The game decisions are made at what are called decision nodes, and, and you know, it, part of this lesson I'll be drawing all of these out on the board. Um, decision nodes, they are circ you know, it's a bit, little circle. The root node is where the game begins, which usually at the so that'll be at the top usually. Uh, it's written at goes from the top, works its way down. The root node is usually a circle that is not filled in, so it's just an empty circle. Every other decision node usually fill in. Um, so it's like, it's a circle and you just kind of highlight it in with your pencil or pen. So easy enough, the, the decision node indicates that a player has a decision to make. The actions the player could take at the decision node um, are indicated by what we call branches. So at each decision node, right, you have to make a decision. So there has to be at least two possible actions. If there were only one action, you don't really have a decision to make. You just take that course of action. Uh, these are called branches, right? Branches of the game tree. You know, uh, I didn't come up with this. I just go with what they say. So uh, each action is denoted by the branch. So it has to be at least two branches to indicate different actions at uh, of the decisions, and you will label on your decision tree, you will be labeling the action to take right on the branch. So if, um, if a player goes right or a player goes left, you're going to indicate on each branch, right or left, right? This is just what you're going to be writing down or um, depending what it is. If it's lawyers, you could say to sue or to not sue, or if it's uh, siblings, share or not share, whatever it is, it gets written right there. The payoff matrix, right, you write it in the row or the column, either above or to the left of the, of the decisions that are being made. In uh, a tree diagram, you write the actions that could be taken right on the branch. Players are indicated at the decision node. So who is making the particular decision is written at the decision node. Now, there's an interesting thing that we'll see a lot, and it's very relevant in real world games, is that actions can be taken by an outside player. Sometimes the player could be thought of as a person, sometimes it's just random luck. Uh, players called nature, right? If you're a, um, if you're a political candidate, the, you can't really help uh, a lot of things that could happen, right? If um, on the 2012 presidential election, two weeks to go, neither Obama nor Romney um, had anything to do with that hurricane that came through. Um, a hurricane came through, uh, I believe that was Hurricane Sandy that hit then. So Sandy came through, that's an outside player. Right? That's not either, that's neither Obama nor Romney. That's just an outside player of the game. In that case, it very much was Mother Nature. But it doesn't have to be. It could be a, a different player who really has no payout in the game at all. 
Um, right? If you're thinking pop political games, maybe there's a big endorsement that happens from somebody that matters. Or if it's a sporting event, um, you know, maybe it's a referee's call. Right? The ref's not a player in the game, but um, it certainly can influence uh, what's going to happen in the game or the strategies that are taken if there is a controversial call that's, that's made by the referees. So there's all sorts of ways nature can intervene into a particular game, and we'll go through a couple of examples in class. The outcomes of the game are written at the end of all of the decisions. So you'll have a decision node, the various branches, then other possible decision nodes, more branches. By the time you're done with all of those at the bottom, um, that's the outcome, and you write in the payoffs for each player, uh, similar to how you would write those into a payoff matrix. With these extensive games, and this will be an important point that probably this might seem obvious when you first see it, but each outcome has to have a unique history to be able to trace back the actions. When we start going through these games, we're going to be doing what's called the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or the rollback equilibrium, depending which textbook you want to read. Um, they describe it different ways. Uh, they mean the same thing in that we will be studying what we expect to happen in a game based on working backwards all the way to the beginning of the game. And so it's important that we, you know, from each outcome, you can trace back the unique history in the game. Information sets. If a player takes action without perfect information, you're saying that these choices lie within an information set. We're going to be representing that by circling more than one decision node, and you'll see this graphically um, in just a moment. Now, you say this, we, we mentioned that it's without the perfect information. This could be also a way to represent a simultaneous move game within a sequential game, or to represent a simultaneous game using extensive form. Right. Their simultaneous games can be written with extensive form. There's no rule against that at all, and you will be doing some of that. The homework has you do some of this. Um, it's represented by an information set, simply circling the choices to indicate the player doesn't know. Like, if player A moves first and could go right or left, and player B doesn't know, you circle the two decision nodes, and, and that will show everybody that player B does not know what player A chose. Point six, every extensive form game could be written as a normal form game and vice versa. You could write any game either way. As mentioned, usually sequential games, it makes more sense to put them in uh, extensive form. Uh, I always think simultaneous games make more sense in normal form, but either, either can be written either way. The final point, and when we talked about what was called a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, Right? Subgames come into play. A subgame of uh, the game consists of all nodes and payoffs that follow a complete information node, which means you can't have um, you can't have the case where a player doesn't know what happened. As long as the player has perfect information um, starting at a decision point, that is a subgame of the whole game. A proper subgame is a subgame that includes only part of the complete game, so the entire game is considered a subgame. A proper subgame is a subgame that's just not the entire game. Uh, perhaps that's a little bit uh, of a nuanced point, but there are times where I'll ask you to count the subgames up, um, usually not for necessarily for an exam, but just so you know what we're... So we're all speaking the same language and going through these various games.